Welcome to another episode of Bone Talks. Today we'll be discussing the broken leg, also known as a tibial shaft fracture. Before we get started, we'll review our disclaimer. This video is for educational purposes only. Watching is not a substitute for seeing a doctor. If you're concerned about a medical condition, call your doctor or call 911. We're not responsible for any delays or damages in care because this is not medical advice. It's for education only. So, what is a classic broken leg? It's thought of as a crack in the tibia or the fibula. But before we go into more detail about how to diagnose and treat it, let's take a look at the anatomy of the leg. Here's a regular dude, and here's a better look at his leg. And then here's his leg under the skin, where you can see the bones. There are two bones in your leg, but the tibia, also known as your shin bone, is the primary bone, and it bears 90% of your body weight. The fibula is the other bone in your leg. It bears only 10% of your body weight, and it's located on the outside of your leg. The tibia joins up with the femur bone to form the knee joint here. And it joins up with the tail as one of your foot bones to form the ankle joint here. Now here's a comparison of that drawing with the real life x-ray of the leg bone. And you see the same thing. Here's the femur. Here's the tibia. Here's the fibula. Here's your knee. And the ankle is located somewhere down here. The tibia can be broken anywhere, but treatment differs based on where it's the break is. So doctors sometimes break the tibia into thirds to make it easier to understand how to treat it. The upper third is called a tibial plateau fracture, also known as a broken knee. It's pretty common and it's discussed in a different talk. Today we'll be discussing tibial shaft fractures, which is the central third. Injury to the bottom third of the tibia is also called a pilon fracture and it's a really bad broken ankle. It's pretty uncommon unless you're in a major motor vehicle accident and it requires an extensive rehabilitation. Also note that when the, a leg breaks, the tibia bone alone can break, or the fibula alone can break, or most commonly, both tibia and fibula break together. The tibial shaft can break after a twisting injury, as you can see on the left. In these cases, you see that the tibia and fibula break at different levels, and this is because the force of energy travels up the leg and causes cracks that are long and spiral in nature. The tibial shaft can also break after blunt trauma, like after meeting the recently escaped rhino from the Philadelphia Zoo. In these cases, the fibula and tibia break in the same place. Usually the crack is straight and short. Sometimes the bone is broken into many pieces with high energy blunt trauma. So how is a broken leg diagnosed? People with a broken leg come into the emergency room after an accident, unable to put weight on that injured leg due to severe pain, swelling, and uh, swelling and more swelling. Doctors are suspicious for a broken leg when they see these symptoms so they order an x-ray which is great at seeing the bone and diagnosing this injury. X-ray not only gives a diagnosis but will also guide treatment because treatment depends on the pattern of the broken bones. Not all breaks are the same. The break looks really complex like it's in a lot of pieces or a crack that goes near the knee or ankle joint then most doctors will order a CAT scan. CAT scan is a few hundred x-rays taken of the leg in slices like a loaf of bread that combined give a 3D picture of what the break looks like. It can be helpful for complex cases. Now that we understand a little more about a broken leg and how to diagnose it, let's see how it's treated. The goal of treatment is two things. One, make the bone straight. And two, make the bone stable so that it can heal over the next few weeks. This can be accomplished in different ways. The majority of these need surgery, but not all of them. If the bone is broken but it's straight, meaning normal alignment, also meaning less than 5 degrees of bending, and it's unlikely that the bone will move any more once it's placed into a cast, then the entire leg from the upper thigh to the toes is splinted or casted. This is called a long leg cast, and it will protect the bone while it heals. The problem is that this can take a long time and it will be a while before you can put any weight on that leg. So most active and young people like to elect for surgery even if they have good alignment of the bone because life is short and they want to party. More commonly, the break is too complicated to stay in a straight position while it heals, so surgeons repair the broken bone by straightening it out and then holding it straight with stainless steel or titanium metal. Traditionally, these fractures were all held in place with a metal plate and screws. An incision was made over the fracture and the plate bridged the fracture site, holding the bone in position while healing occurred. The metal plate itself wasn't expected to withstand the person's full body weight over a long time. So the plate's real function is to hold the bone in position until the bone is strong enough to support someone's body weight again. 
Currently, the more common method of realigning the tibia is to insert a metal rod down the center of the bone. See, our tibia is hollow. Bone marrow lives on the inside of a thick calcium rim. This nail is called an intramedullary nail because it goes down the medullary canal. This method is preferred by many surgeons today because the incisions are smaller, so the scars are smaller. Only a few holes are needed to place the rod down the center of the bone, and so there's less injury to the soft tissue, meaning fat, skin, and muscle of the leg. This becomes particularly important when there's an open fracture, aka a compound fracture, when the bone goes through the skin. In this case, the bone will injure soft tissue as it breaks through the skin, and it's best to avoid performing surgery through this area where the tissue is already damaged. The intramedullary nail is very light and the majority of patients are unable to detect a weight difference between their legs. The rod is held in place by a few screws and the patients are typically allowed to start putting weight onto their leg immediately after surgery. One major issue worth mentioning about tibial shaft fractures is the fact that there is very little soft tissue, meaning fat or muscle, covering the bone. Just feel with your own shin bone. It's right there, just under the skin, and this means that when the tibia breaks, there's a pretty good chance that a bone fragment can pro poke through the skin. When the bone goes through the skin, it's called an open or compound fracture, and these are at increased risk for becoming infected. So people with this injury need to be started on IV antibiotics immediately. This is really the best way to prevent infections. And then, as soon as possible, they're also taken to the operating room to wash out the bone that's gone through the skin. After surgery, antibiotics are continued for 24 to 48 hours depending on the severity of the surgery. Overall, tibial shaft fractures, aka a broken leg, heals very well. For more information, go to Bontox.com or email us at contact at Bontox.com. Thanks again.